Hi everybody, welcome to this new video where we are going to explain what is a sampling and the techniques for applying the sampling. First of all, remember that the last video we talked about the, what is the statistic and that the statistic work with data. That data could be part of a population, but sometimes the population is too big or it's going to be an infinite population. So that's why it's better sometimes to work with samplings. Okay, sampling or sample is going to be just a part, a representative part of a population. The process to get a sample, it's called sampling. Okay, as you can see here in this image, you can see that this part represents a population and those parts represent a sampling. This sample is part of a population. First of all, I'm going to explain what is not a random or aleatory sampling. This example is going to be called not probabilistic sampling. Okay, let's suppose that we have a teacher here. This is the teacher. I'm going to draw here. This is the teacher. Okay. And then here I'm going to have the principal of the school. This is the principal. And here we have a school inspector. Okay, okay. So the inspector asks to the principal that he wants to know how the students are in the school. It means if they are uh, people with uh, good notes or I mean student with good notes or student with problems or etc. Okay? Here we have the group. The group is over here. And we have a lot of students. For example, we have a very, very smart student like the he, this one, this one, and this one. Those are very, very, very smart students. In other hand, we have a regular student like this student and this student. Okay? And also we have a very bad student like this student okay so let's suppose that the principal is asking one student or not the principal is going to ask two students to the teacher because the inspector is going to apply a test and then he is going to know the things that he wants to know about the the uh, the background knowledge about the students or the problem that they have or etc. Whatever. Okay? What do you think that the teacher should do? Obviously, if you want to know the best uh, note in the test, what are you going to do? You are going to send this student, this student, or this student. Okay? Maybe if the inspector is asking two uh, students, maybe it's going to be this and this, or maybe this and this, but never you are going to send this student because you want to have a, a good note. This is called not probabilistic because you, as a teacher, are producing the sampling according your convenience, and this is not randomly. This is called not probabilistic. And probabilistic is that each one of the student will have the same opportunity to present the test. Okay? It means then in probabilistic, uh, the principal, the teacher could choose this, 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 or this. They have the same opportunity to present the test. So it means that this is going to be probabilistic, okay? So sometimes it's difficult to select one student in that case. I mean, it's difficult to do it probabilistic, okay? 
For example, the method that you that everybody make a paper with, with its names, and then you put the names in a in a bowl, and there you mix the bowl and take randomly, okay, two papers, and then you select the names. This is a probabilistic technique, okay. But right now I'm going to explain four techniques, probabilistic techniques, for make a sampling. But remember, this is the most important thing that you should know. Never, never use not probabilistic methods. Because the thing is, you are not going to have the result that you want. You need to have the result that exists. All right? So that's why always use a probabilistic method. Now let's see what are the four techniques to make a sampling. The first probabilistic sampling method is simple random sampling. Example, I work in the psychology department in some school, and I would like to make an analysis about the student's mood this semester. I want to choose three students of second grade group. How can I make a simple random sample? Okay, as you can see here, we have students is the group group of 16 students then the student they have a different mood as you can see we can see happy people sad people and people that is maybe not so happy or not so not so sad okay well we need to choose three of that student but by simple run assembly what we should do okay the first step that you should do is that, first of all, you need to make a label of each one. For example, it could be a number. And in that case, I'm going to say that this is going to be the student 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 okay each student has one one number that number represents the student but it's important to see at the end how many digitals we have for the last student in that case we have two digitals this is a very important thing that you need to consider why because i'm going to choose one table which table this one this table is called random sampling numbers. As you can see, we have a lot of numbers and those numbers are considered random numbers or aleatory numbers, okay? So, in random way, I'm going to choose, look at this, I'm going to choose one row and then I'm going to choose one column. Sorry. And then I'm going to choose one column. Okay. Look at this. Here, as you can see, in the rows, we have from 1 to 30. So, which one we need to select? Whatever. I'm going to select 8. This is absolutely randomly, all right? And column, as you can see, we have from 1 to 32. Okay, let's choose one. For example, mm, 10. Okay, well, and then look at this. We are going to work with two digitals. This is very important. Why? Because the last student has two digitals. Okay? So, let's go to the random sample numbers to the row 8. This is the row 8. Okay? And the column 10. Okay? Let's see. This is the row 8. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
A, 9, 10. And this is the 10, okay? Look at this. The first number of two digitals that I'm going to have is 21. 21. So my question is, do we have a 21 students? No. Okay, so 21 is not for, for the first number. This is not going to be used. Next one, 59. We don't have 75. 39, 22, 35, 65, 82, 94, 42, 89, 90. Then let, let's continue in number number uh, 9, 94, 66, 54, 82, 0, 7. Wow, we have the first one, 0, 7. So, the first student that we're going to select is this one. Okay, the student 07. Let's make here some color. Okay, this student is going to be the first student select. Okay, and he's happy. Let's make the happy face. Good. Let's continue. It was the 07. It was over... Here, zero seven. Let's continue. Fifty five, forty, sixty one, twenty nine, sixty six, thirty four, twenty five, nineteen, thirteen. Hey, do we have a thirteen? Yes, we have a thirteen. So let's see what is the student number thirteen. The student number thirteen is this one. Okay. So in that case, this is the second one, the second one that we're going to select, student number 13. And it's happy too. Okay. There we go. Now we need to continue with the other student. Okay, let's see, it was 13. Let's continue with, um, this is 81, 7, 70, 90. 6, 49, 87, 51, 90, 90, 47, 47, 81, 86, 83, 29, and uh, this is 68, 39, 87, 24, 09, 09. Do we have a student with 09? Yes, we have. Let's see what is the student with 09 is this student this is the third student select and this student is set okay so this is the simple random sampling is very very easy just remember the first step that you should do is to keep a label to each element that you have in that case the elements are people then you need to select a row and a column. And then you need to check the last one. How many digital do you have? Because that digital you are going to use in the random sampling numbers. Okay? Sometimes it's not immediately. You need to check number by number by number. Sometimes it's uh, very, very soon. And then sometimes you apply a lot of time to do it but at the end you will have your your uh, your sample and in that case it's a simple random sampling the second technique for sampling is the systematic sampling and here we have two options to do it for example the first one said simple systematic sample okay can you see this image what can you see over here? Look at this. If we label, if we label the people that we have over here, we're going to see something very interesting. One, two, three. Three select. One, two, I mean, four, five, six. Six is select. Seven, eight, nine is select. Ten, etc. Okay, what is the relation between 3, 6, and 9? Yes, 
the relation is that here you are going to select H3 okay and this is a systematic because H3 H3 uh, guy is going to be select and then you are going to have your your sample okay this is a systematic sample but this is just a simple here we have another one using the formula k it's equal to n over n where k is the interval n is the population and n capital letter and n is sample okay look at this let's see this example it's it i am an inspector and i need to visit five restaurants this week to check the healthy standards can i make a sample of c of five using systematic methods okay the first thing that you need to do again it's to label each one okay here i'm going to i'm going to write one two three four uh five six seven eight nine um ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen and seventeen okay we have seventeen different restaurants okay look at this here we have we need to calculate k that is going to be the in uh, the interval the first question that you need to answer is what is the value of n n is a population it means how many does restaurant in total do we have we have six uh, we have 17 restaurants and these 17 restaurants represent our population in that case the population is finite population because you know exactly the number or elements that you have then n is the sample as you can see here the inspector needs to visit five restaurants so in that case the sample is going to be five okay well with this information we're going to calculate k k is equal to 17 over 5 so let's take our calculator and then let's see what is the division how much is the division here we have the calculator okay of 17 over 5 and then we have 3.4 let's write over here 3.4 and then what we are going to do we are going to round the number okay in that case if you have 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 you are going to round to one number before integer number and you you have 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 to one number integer number after in that case it's going to be three okay the interval is three like this one but it was just because you say three 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 it's three but here is calculated okay well we have the k but right now the question is which one is going to be the first if you decide that the one is going to be the first this is not probabilistic again why because you are deciding okay it should be absolutely randomly again so let's see the last one the last one how many digital do you have again two digitals okay so it means that again we are going to use the random sampling numbers okay now let's choose new row, row which one do you want remember from 1 to 30 let's use 24 and column which one do you want we have from 1 to 32 let's use 25 okay okay let's see row 24 column 25 okay let's see again and here we're going to have 24 is this one 
as you can see and the 25 is going to be this one okay 25 column 24 row this is the, the first one but remember that we're going to work again with two digitals because the last one was 17 okay the last one label was 17 okay so we have 27 my question is do we have a 27 restaurant no next one 17 yes we have a 17 restaurant so it means that this restaurant the 17 restaurant is going to be the first restaurant but it's not going to be the chosen restaurant is going to be the first and from here you are going to start to count three okay so let's see this is 17 what is the next number so we don't have 18 so let's start in one okay it's 17 let's start one one two three we got the first one one is for one two three second one one two uh three this is the next one one two three this is the fourth and then one two three this is the fifth okay so this is the first but we are not going to to start over here we are going to start from here one two three then one two three look don't look the position look the number one two three then four five six then seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and then this is going to be the sample the sample is going to be four by sonic red luster applebee's ihop and dairy queen and this is the systematic sampling method. The third method is called stratified sampling. Example, I need to make for service about some product customer satisfaction, but some people speak English and others Spanish. How can I make the service in a probabilistic way? Well, in this case, the stratified sampling it has a very and a specific characteristic. The characteristic is that we have groups. For example, all this group, all this group speaks, this group speaks English. Okay, these all the people in that group. Uh, speak English and all the people in this group speak Spanish so as you can see we have groups sometimes the groups are not in, in uh, giving you directly but you know that they have a specific characteristic that uh, that can uh, become in groups all the population that you have okay so in that case we have English and Spanish all these people all these people speak English all these people speak Spanish the example say that they need to make for service but it doesn't say that how many service in English or how many service in Spanish this is not in specific maybe it could be all in English and all in Spanish and I, I think this is the thing that we're going to do. We're going to decide if we make the service with the English, with the English uh, people or with the Spanish people. Okay. In that case, we need, first of all, we need to choose if we're going to work with the group number one or with the group number two. In that case, we need to do what? Yes, we need to make a label. English people is going to be or people that speak English is going to be one and people that speak Spanish is going to be number two What we should do? Exactly 
we need to choose a row and a column because we're going to work again with the random sampling numbers which row we're going to choose maybe row 3 which column maybe row 18 okay now how many digitals choose one digital in that case it's one digital because we have only number one and number two one per group let's go to three and eight okay here we have three and then let's go to number 18 yes it's 18 yes it is okay sorry sorry for the noise is the noise is three and let's go to 18 over here here we have seven okay but we don't have group number seven so let's continue three eight six eight one so the group number one is the group that we're going to select we are going to select the people that speak english and then right now what we should do okay i'm going to select which of these people is going to be the people that i'm going to apply the survey what you should do okay you need to make a label one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve we have twelve people okay for this second part i'm going to select again a row in a column which row let's select the row number one in the last column 30 32 okay how many digitals two digitals because the last one is 12 okay okay let's go for the last one is going to be one and this is but this is only four and this is not two digital it's going to be 43 okay 43 no we don't have 43 people 56 32 19 we don't have 19 um 88 21 19 zero four yes we have zero four let's go with the people number four and this is going to be the first customer that i'm going to apply the survey let's continue 52 61 82 75 12 yes we have 12 number people okay this is going to be the second one let's continue 62 71 09 09 we have a 09 people label and here this is the 09 people okay this is the person number 09 51 33 06 and the last one is going to be the person with the number 6 there you are this is the sample you are going to apply the survey to people that speak english first of all and then the people with the label 4 6 9 and 12. okay remember stratified is because you have groups first decide which group and then decide which part of the group the fourth and last Techniques for make a sampling, it's called conglomerate sampling. This is kind of similar to stratified sampling. It's similar because we're going to work with groups, but the difference is that in stratified you have a groups. Sometimes you don't have the groups directly, but you have a specific characteristic where you can see the groups and how to form it. But in that case, you don't have any clue to make the groups because you don't have anything in uh, 
like a identification like a coincidence in something anything similar all right so that uh, that's why in conglomerate you are going to make a groups but you don't have idea the how to make the groups just are going to make the groups okay the conglomerate sample example say in some company a marketing research wants to be done out to any random products how can I conglomerate sampling be applied to this task for get the sample? Okay, as you can see, we have a lot of products over here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 50 different products. And I need to select 20. You can apply whatever, whatever um, method that you want. But in that case, we are going to make by con conglomerate sample. You want to make the groups. You, for example, if you decide to make the ten, uh, five groups of ten, maybe you can say that this is one group. One, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Or maybe if you want to decide to make uh, 10 groups of 5, you can say that this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So it's your decision as you want to do it. Okay? So in that case, I'm going to make 5 groups. Okay? 5 groups of, um, of 10. In that case, it means that I'm, uh, at the end, I'm just going to select two groups. This is going to be the first group. And I'm going to make this is going to be the first group. Okay. First group. Second group. Third group. fourth group and fifth group what we should do later I need to make a label one group one group two group three group four and group five okay so if I want uh, 20 products it means that I'm going to choose how many groups in that case two what I should do later, again, I'm going to use the random sampling numbers and I'm going to say I want to work with the row and with the column. In that case, the row is going to be, I don't know, maybe um, the row 11 and the column is going to be 5. Okay, so the next thing that you need to decide is how many digitals, just one digital. Why? Because the last the number is 5, which is why the digital. So let's go to row 11 and column 5. Row 11, column 5, and then we have 9. We don't have 9 groups, so this is not going to be the number that I'm going to use. 8, no. 6, no. 9, no. 9, no. 3, yes. We have 3. Okay? So the first group that is going to be select is the group number three. Okay, with this group, we have 10 products, all that products. Now let's continue. Okay, we are in row 11 and here, and it was in this one. Six, no, one, yes. This is the other one. And then we already have our 20 random products. This is the first 10 and second 10. And this is the conglomerate sampling method. So to conclude this video, we already seen the conglomerate sampling method, stratify sampling method systematic sampling method and simple random sampling method 
And remember, the most important thing when you want to make a sampling is never, never, never use not probabilistic method.